Welcome to Bible Track Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Founded in 1938, Bible Tracks seeks to take the gospel to all the world. Our teacher today is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. For more information about Bible Tracks, go to our website at BibleTracksInc.org. And now our teacher, Mark Smith. How do you do, my friend? Welcome to the Friday edition for Bible Track Echoes. Thanks so much for joining us. Guess what? My Bible's open. <laughs> if you can right now, reach over, pick up your own copy of the Word of God and join me as my Bible sits open to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians 4 verses 20 and 21 will be our focus as we're walking our way through the book of Ephesians. Along the way today, I'll be encouraging you to get some gospel tracts from us. Now, that word tract is spelled T-R-A-C-T. By a gospel tract, I'm talking about a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. At the end of this program, my announcer is going to be telling you three different ways by which you can give to us your name and your mailing address. Please have pen and paper handy. Jot down one of those methods. Give us your name. Give us your mailing address. We want to send you, absolutely free of charge, a sample packet which contains one each of all of our English gospel tracts. My friend, I'll guarantee you two things. Number one, as you get the tracks and read them, you're going to have your own personal skills in telling the gospel be made even sharper. Number two, you're going to find tools there that you're going to want to use to hand out to others. This gospel tract is entitled, We Are Grateful. We're grateful. It's directed to people who have served in the military or are serving in the military. It begins this way. Hello, veteran. Yes, we're grateful for what you did to preserve our freedom. It talks about whether they saw bloody combat or came back hurt in combat and whatever. But then it asks this question. Have you ever wondered if it's true that a good and faithful service man or service woman who dies for their country is assured of an escape from hell and an eternity in heaven? Some people think that. If I give my life for a good cause, God will honor that and take me into heaven. I understand the thought process, but it doesn't agree with the Word of God. It does not agree with Jesus. Oh, friend, this gospel tract lays out our, our tenderheartedness towards military personnel, but our need to give them the truth about you must be born again. Now, friend, if you or your local church are interested in seeing the gospel impact the world, because we really do send tracts all over the world, we would love to have you contact us and let us give you some information about what we do and how you can be a part of that, support the work. Perhaps you'd like me to come and share the work of Bible tracts at your local church, your Sunday school class, or whatever please contact us. We'd love to share what God is doing around the world. Well, let me lead into our Bible study time this way. Many years ago, a man gave to me a very important insight. Uh, we were talking about children and how so many children grow up in some negative ways to be like their parents. And particularly, we were talking about children who grow up uh, watching their alcoholic parents or their parents with foul language or their parents that smoke and other issues like that. And we said that far too often the children follow in the footsteps of their parents. Well, even teenagers who desperately say, I'm never going to be like my dad, I'm never going to be like my mother, uh, end up being like them. My friend told me about the principle of focus. He said, I'm quoting now, those kids who say they don't want to be like their parents, but they stay focused on their parents and what they focus on, they become. Well, my friend went on to say that we must give to young people a new focus. Now, don't let them, he said, don't let them focus on who they don't want to be like, but let them focus on who they want to be like. I say that because today that's exactly where Ephesians 4, 20 and 21 will bring us. Let's learn about focus. Come with me. I'm reading now. Ephesians 4, verse 20 and 21 says this. 
But ye have not so learned Christ, if so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. In my walk through Ephesians 4, verses 17 to 24, I'm using outline words that begin with the letter D, like in the word dog. My word for verse 17 was the word different. We live a different life as believers. Then verses 18 and 19, the word is dark. Unsaved people have a dark life, but today we come to 20 and 21. My key word here is directed. Believers are to live a directed life. I could have used the word discipled here because that's really what we're going to see has happened here to these believers there in Ephesus. Now, verse 20 begins with a parting of the ways. Notice the word parting. It begins with a parting of the ways. After describing the lifestyle and the spiritual state of lost people in verses 18 and 19, the Holy Spirit now says to the believers in that uh, in Jesus Christ to that their ways of living are to be part are to be different parting ways from how the lost live their lives. Now, we're still going to go to work like the lost do. We're still going to mow our grass like the lost do. But when it comes to ethical and moral issues, we part ways with lost people because we're followers of Jesus. Verse 20 begins with these words, but ye, but ye. There's a contrast being made here. The ye in this verse, in the immediate context, are the believers living there at Ephesus when this letter arrived. But God has left us this New Testament book of Ephesians for us today. You and I are also, who are followers of Jesus Christ in this era, listen now, we are the ye. You and I who know Christ are the ye being spoken to here. And you and I are to live a parting of the ways. Well, Let's move from the parting of the ways here because we come here now to see the practice that had been taken place. The, we move from the parting of the ways to a practice in some ways. According to verse 20 here, the believers there at Ephesus had learned Christ. Verse 21 says that they had heard of him, that is of Jesus, and they had been taught by him, by Jesus. Now, I'm going to guarantee you 100% that the saints there in Ephesus in that era had not been, none of them had been involved in hearing Jesus personally in their life during Jesus' earthly ministry. But they had been involved in a learning process where the messengers of Jesus and the teachers of Jesus had come to them and opened God's word to them. Verse 21 says that they had been hearing. They had come under the sound of good, godly Bible teachers. These saints listened not to hear the voice of a human teacher, but to hear the voice of Jesus. Let me say right now, wow. We hope that that tribe of believers today will increase. The book of 1 Corinthians, some of the people said, well, I follow the teacher Paul, and I follow Peter, and I follow Apollos. Oh, friend, who's ever doing the preaching of the clear word of God, we need to hear the voice of Jesus. Amen? Verse 21 says that these folk had been taught. Notice the word. They had been taught. They had been deliberately directed to study the truth about Jesus. That word taught there means to grow in knowledge, yes, but it also a growth in knowledge that leads to a change in how we live. This is the word that Jesus used when he over in Matthew 11 when he said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and what? That's right, learn of me there, for I am meek and lowly of heart, you shall find rest to your souls. Uh, this, this coming to learn means that we adorn what we study. Now, we're back to the whole idea here of you and I becoming like Jesus. And by the way, the same word here taught and learned that Jesus used is used by the Apostle Paul over in Ephesians chapter 4 when he says, I have learned in whatever state I am therewith to be content. 
Now, going through various life circumstances and trials had taught the apostle Paul to adjust his expectations about what his day-to-day life provisions were going to be like. Uh, my parents grew up during the Depression. The Depression that happened in 1929, the early 30s. The people of that generation learned to live based upon the reality, what was going on. They had to learn to be content with a very different life situation than what had been leading up to 1929. They adjusted their lives. Well, the saints that were there in Ephesus had been adjusting their lives based upon what they were learning about the Lord Jesus Christ. These Ephesian believers had been involved in a deliberate learning process. They had deliberately directed their focus onto the Lord Jesus, and it appears that their teachers gave them clear application about what it looks like to put on this teaching of Jesus Christ in a day-by-day fashion. So many times, those of us who are involved in teaching the Word of God tell what the Bible says, but we fail to give a deliberate application what it looks like to adorn the teaching. Well, we've seen the parting. We've seen the practice. Now, verse 20 and 21 give us the person. Both verses mention Jesus here. And I'm told by those Bible scholars far better, far more involved in the languages and so on than I, that when Paul uses the actual word Jesus here in the book of Ephesians, he's referring specifically to the truth about the death and resurrection of Christ. Now, those two words, the death and resurrection, are the very heart, the very core, the very foundation of the gospel message. These Ephesian saints were taught to live gospel-centered lives. They were taught to live gospel-focused lives, lives focused on what it means for Christ to have to die for this sin, what it means for Christ to arise from the dead. You see, because Jesus died for their sins, these believers rejoiced in the forgiveness of sin while they also lived lives not making a practice of sin. And because Jesus Jesus had risen from the dead, then these believers also knew that they had the resources to walk in newness of life and to love one another. He talked about that earlier here in the chapter of 4 of Ephesians. All right, beloved, you and I, are we deliberately putting ourselves in the place to have a directed life? Are we putting ourselves in a place for others to tell us what the Word of God says and how to adorn it? A life directed by focusing on Jesus and then adjusting our lives based on what we learn? If we're not doing that, then we need to learn to be a, a an Ephesian believer. Oh, we talk about being Berean students. Let's be an Ephesian saint today. Dear friend, If you know Christ as Savior, then let become a disciple of him. Dear friend, if you do not know Jesus Christ as Savior, two words for you, the cross and the resurrection. The cross of Jesus Christ. On the cross, Jesus died shedding his blood to pay your sin debt. Don't let that sin debt go without you accepting Christ as your Savior and then living out the life that he gives you because he arose from the dead. Amen. Thank you for watching Bible Track Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our Bible Tracks, please write us at P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois 61702, or call us at 309 828 6888. You can also visit our website at BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.